guys welcome this is a general reading for the collective of taurus sun moon rising venus welcome cross watchers and if you're brand new to the channel really happy to have you here please do come in the comments say hello let me know where you're tuning in from that's sort of my thing i love to see where people are coming in from all over the world and I do reply to comments later on um, tonight. I'll do that. I'll come in. I'll review. I'll say hello back and um, answer any pressing questions you may have. Okay, so this is the Divine Master's Oracle. Let me get you an Oracle card, a Divine Master, to uh, activate the reading. Let's see what's coming through. This is one of Kyle Gray's decks. It's newer to me. So let's see what we get. They're thick cards. Ooh, the Lemurians, clairvoyance activated. Psychic awareness, sensitivity, trust your intuition. Mm-hmm. I think this is the cover art. It sure is. <laughs> oh, Taurus, I love this for you. I love it. Yes. Um... Your clairvoyance is being activated. Trust your intuition. So bizarre, but the intuition theme has been coming up a lot. So I love that it's being activated for you. And just so you know, it came up all the way in the run up to the full moon in Pisces. Pisces rules intuition um, and psych all things, you know, of the psychic realm. And, um, and it's been coming up in the readings and so I think and in your comments and questions so I think I might do a workshop or a small course on intuition let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in anyway this spread is also new as is the spread for the extended going to be new so let's explore shall we I wanted to sort of get you prepared we just came through the full moon in Pisces with a lunar eclipse right past energy uh, associated with the south node which is the past things we have to release in a full moon and now we're in the eclipse wormhole headed to the new moon in libra which is also venus ruled as taurus is and a solar eclipse so we're being shot into the future so i kind of feel like i want to look at lessons that you know we're still grappling with from the past baggage we may be holding on to things we still need to release etc okay so i'll pull the cards i'll walk you through it and then we'll um, get some clarifiers to help us out i worked through this with aries yesterday it took me a while to get through the spread so this might go longer than my normal all right so um, listen, this is more focused on you. So even if you're here as a cross watcher, this can be more your stuff. Just might be reversed. Keep that in mind. What is the lesson from past relationships um, for you or even in the past in this connection? I'm talking about cooperation, being on the same page at the same time, co-creating something. So that might be a lesson here. Um, baggage what are you potentially carrying around right like tethered to your own little rain cloud and what's the baggage either again from past relationships um or within this connection mm -hmm. there's something that is like an albatross around your neck and you should have offloaded it a long time ago there's some heavy negative karma baggage here and it's pressure and it's difficult and it's heavy and it's burdensome and you need to let it go. But like I said, it feels like you're tethered to it, whether it's from the past, beyond this relationship or the past within this relationship. What do you need to release from these past relationships or within this connection? Um, this came in for Aries too. I think it was in the same spot, if I'm not mistaken. The lover's card is a card of choice. Sometimes what we choose is not choosing us. Mm. You know, it's a free will kind of a thing. 
Um, so we'll get more details from the clarifiers, but did that just land with you like it did for me? And doesn't that feel like it could be pretty heavy? Hard to lug around? Whew. So what's, what's blocking you here in whether it's in this connection or all this ish from the past that you're lugging around, what's blocking you from either experiencing real love in this connection or finding new love? It's like there's such a long waiting game. And the Seven of Pentacles talks about the day you plant the seed is not the day the garden grows. So it's a patience thing, but also how things tend to unfold more organically. So we can't really wait it out, you know, and we can't um, feel this sense of impatience about it when we see it happening for other people, in other words right it's about moving on with our lives and making sure that we're cultivating the soil and that means we're tending to our own garden and then when all the conditions are right it sort of happens organically okay so that's that's your block there's something in there for you taurus and this is a card of taurus so it feels to me like there's something there where it's, it's like you can't wait it out and you can't sort of stare you know the staring at the you know, the watch pot never boils kind of a thing um what do you need to forgive well here we go right you're carrying this crap around all the things that aren't choosing you and the the love that isn't choosing you that you're choosing that isn't right, right? and you're carrying around and I feel like this is so connected to the Aries reading. It's almost scary. Different decks, different days, different signs. But you need to forgive that the dream of the fairy tale, of the beginnings of the life partnership, of the you know wedding that wasn't, or whatever it is that hasn't happened in the time frame that you thought it should, um, or that maybe you felt we were on the path to. So forgive first that you set yourself up with that kind of an expectation. So forgiveness of self is really important, but then forgiveness of, you know, wherever it was that there was the breakdown in a connection that maybe sent you into a tailspin. Um, and, and, and then this sense that it's not, pardon the pun, in the cards for me. For some of you, this will be very literal. Broken engagement, called off wedding. For others of you, it's the vision of that. And maybe the time has passed. So then this is a self-love card, right? What do you need to work on for that sense of self-love that puts you in a whole different frame of mind so that you, you know, like attracts like, so that the universe says, oh, I see this energy now and I know what it wants. I know what it needs. I know how to match it. Nine of Cups is a real sense of emotional self-satisfaction. Like, all is good in my world. I'm good with this. This feels good. I'm content. I have what I need. And if I don't, I know how to get it. Nine of Cups can be wish fulfillment. And it isn't the Ten of Cups, no. But... It's where I am and all is well and there's balance and there's contentment and it starts with you kind of taking stock, looking around saying, yeah, I did this. I've got this. I made all this happen for me. That feels pretty self-satisfying. Okay. So lesson from past relationships or within this connection, three of pentacles. Queen of cups, queen of wands, the moon. Well, those two queens, um, love and passion, the open heart, 
versus this sense of um, allure, right? Something very magical, mystical. There's a dynamic here at play with the moon underneath. I wonder if you feared that you weren't enough for this person. Moon, because I'm reading about you here, right? Did I not, was it, did, was I, did, were they not attracted? Did they not desire? There's a fear here. And I'm looking at the two queens with that three of pentacles being about the co-creative energy, the cooperative energy, where we're on the same page and we're building a foundation. So the lessons there, let me look at the baggage first. Ten of Wands. supposed to we were just at the beginning we were just taking those first steps it was finally coming toward me I was ready to take this big leap and I feel like you're still carrying something that was new something that was like exciting and the beginnings of something coming toward you that you had anticipated that you had set in motion and now it, it, I feel like it didn't, it didn't materialize. It was just the beginnings of it. That's why we're having this four of wands. We've got the lover's card. So let's see what you need to let go of, what you need to release here. Yeah. I don't think it materialized. You waited and waited for this person. This soul connection um, didn't really get past. I don't feel like this person was evolved enough. It stayed in this vibration of flirtation, uh, of, you know, playful, of maybe friends with benefits. And so you couldn't go anywhere with it. Eight of Swords, stuck energy, overthinking, second guessing, self doubt, the waiting game. What do I, you know? Do they want what I want? Are we on the same page? Are they choosing me or not? So that's what you need to release, which, which makes sense, but you're still holding on to it. It's the baggage too because it was new and you were excited and it was about, yeah, I'm going to go all in. I'm going to take this leap of faith. And the block is that you're still waiting. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still manifest. You're still manifesting. You're still like, I'm waiting. I'm, I'm manifesting this 10 of cups, 10 of pentacles. Right, my happily ever after and that future with this person. So, and, the, and there's nothing wrong with waiting, except that you have a lot of uncertainty here a lot of apprehension, a lot of worry um, that what you are choosing will not choose you. So you're placing your life on hold. And that is something to really consider between the full moon and the new moon. So I'm not saying you release the connection. That is not what this is about. It's energy, right? Because the Seven of Pentacles isn't telling you to wait. Seven of Pentacles is telling you that things unfold organically. And so what you want to do is kind of just shift your paradigm a little bit, right? 
um, so that you become a, more of an energetic match and that the timing unfolds in a more organic way and so that it meets you as you're moving through time and space and it finds you at that intersection instead of you standing still waiting it for it to find you because that's not how energy really works so i'm picking up on that here let's see what we need to forgive four of wands ace of swords knight of pentacles Absolutely, like a weird way of coming about this is, did I make a wrong decision? This is a forgiving of self. Like, did I, did I call it wrong? So the two of swords is, because it's from the bottom of the deck, is an inner, inner monologue happening right now, which like, I, I gotta decide how this, what this really is. Maybe I, I thought I saw something that I didn't really see or I called it wrong. Because the Knight of Pentacles moves very slow. Okay. And maybe that's what you thought was happening here. This person is slow to warm up or, you know, and I'm just going to wait it out. And I was just saying that's maybe you're seeing now like, oh, I thought that's what this was. And on some level, that was a decision. And now you're sensing, I'm, I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it clearly. So there's a need to forgive. Because you're, you know, we get to see things different. We get to see them with fresh eyes. We get to have that epiphany like, oh, right? Maybe what I thought was moving slowly and coming toward me really wasn't what I thought it was. Because I'm seeing a page of pentacles, I'm seeing the page of wands, and those pages aren't really evolving in this particular part of the reading. And you're in this seven of pentacles waiting, you know, I'm waiting on this to choose me. I'm waiting on this, I'm manifesting it, but it isn't really happening and so it's becoming a heavy burden it's baggage it's hard it's heavy it's burdensome and it's it's triggering it's unsettling so i sort of feel like we got to forgive the decision because we get to choose again we get to decide something new so question number not question card number six is your self-love card Yes, absolutely. Okay, so <laughs> we gotta, gotta take the good with the bad. All right, so the self love part is lesson learned. Gotta feel pretty good about that. Close out that cycle where I may be dealing with somebody who's emotionally avoidant, who isn't ready for what I'm ready for, okay? Doesn't make them a bad person. I gotta be good with what they can give. I gotta be good with what, where they're at at this moment, or I gotta be good with me, uh, right? The 10 of wands, boom, done, right? I'm gonna release that heavy burden. I'm going to get the relief I need. And if you're going to stay in the connection, that is absolutely 100% your prerogative, but you now have clarity. You see it more clearly and you move at the pace of the person who's moving a little more slowly, but you're not in this constant state of waiting for something to happen that may not happen. And you either accept this person on their terms as they are, and enjoy what you have and feel good about what you have because you know that they do care 
and they're not out to hurt you, but they don't want more than what you have right now. And if that's cool, cool. If it's not, adios, muchachos. Do you see what I'm saying? There's a self-love aspect here to you being good with you and you closing out the cycle of, of the waiting game and all the fears that that stirs up and all, you know, the second guessing and self-doubt and all the stuck energy and the kind of hovering on the edge of the cliff waiting to leap for someone who isn't going to leap. And you, you either get to launch yourself into a whole new cycle and leave this behind, or you get to enjoy a connection for what it is and the comfort uh, that it brings you as it is, nothing more. So that's a very interesting reading for you here, Taurus. And of course, I am gonna take it to the extended because now I wanna see some more energy around this person. I want to see some more energy around you. Um, so in the extended, I am looking at both of you. I am looking at both of your energies presently. I am looking at both of your blocks within your connection. So it's different than this blockage here because this was all for you. Um, and I am looking at your relationship. Um, and then I will get um, divine guidance and we'll also look at how this connection might progress. So like the outcome. Um, but I love this for you. I love what you're getting here. I love that you're sort of really honest and showing here like what the lesson is, is where your fears are coming from and what it is you're waiting for and how much of a burden that places on you and how it holds you back and what story you tell yourself about that and how you're kind of going like, oh, yeah, I need to forgive the fact that maybe I made a wrong decision by thinking somebody was just moving slowly. Maybe it's not about that at all. Maybe it's not, okay. Maybe this is just somebody who avoids emotional involvement on a, on a deep, who do, who's given me as much as they can. My bad. Really interesting reading. Okay, so that is what I have for you. Um, yeah, trust your intuition for sure in this situation. Intuition and suspicion are different animals. As you all know, you've heard me say that. Your intuition is just that spidey sense that I feel I'm seeing here in your forgiveness position, which told you, wait a minute, uh, my radar is on high and also within, like, no, I don't think I called this right. I don't think this is headed where I thought it was. And I need to forgive that it isn't. I need to forgive them and I need to forgive myself. Made a bad call. That's intuition, okay? Sometimes with the moon, we allow that to venture away from intuition and dive into suspicion so we don't want to do that i'm headed to the extended the links are below you have options one two or three so make sure you look at those click a link make sure you know what you're getting as always i do offer private readings the link is a little further down so you do have to scroll and you can head to my booking page to check out that offer i love you i will see you at the extended i'll be there in a second bye for now